It's been a tough couple of weeks for pollsters. How did the polls get it so wrong again? The polling was wrong. And the polling seem, does seem to have been missed. There's no question about that. And it wasn't just the presidential polls that were off. Well, based on the polling, Democrats entered the election with very high expectations. They expected to win the presidency, a majority in the U.S. Senate, and expand their majority in the U.S. House. But it's clear from the election returns we have so far that they fell short of those expectations. The reaction toward pollsters has not been kind. Silver is being hauled over the coals on social media. After a poor performance in 2016, the polling industry entered 2020 promising that it had corrected its mistakes. So what went wrong? Is this going to be edited or do you want perfection from top to bottom? First, a very quick overview on how polling works from Iowa pollster Jay Ann Selzer, whose firm was one of the few to hit its mark in 2020. Selzer's late October poll for the Des Moines Register showed President Trump up by seven points on Joe Biden in Iowa. Trump won the state by eight points. Well, what we want to do with a poll is talk to a relatively small group of people and have them accurately reflect a larger population. In election polling, that is the future electorate. We set out with some random digit telephone numbers, landline and cell phones, and talk to people, and then ultimately screen out just the likely voters and interview them about their preferences. The polls we see reported in the media and aggregated by sites like 538 are commissioned by news organizations. They're meant to be independent, nonpartisan snapshots of voter preferences that journalists use to make sense of a race. But one long-standing issue is with how poll results are communicated. There is a lot of sloppy and accurate and incomplete uh, reporting on, on polling. We need to be mindful that polls have margins of error. For example, if we had a poll that showed Joe Biden at 50 percent and Donald Trump at 46 percent that had a 3 percent margin of error either way, that margin of error applies to both candidates and not to the difference between them. So Joe Biden could have 47 percent or as high as 53 percent and Donald Trump could have as low as 43 percent but as high as 49 percent. We really don't know who has the clear advantage in that survey. Still, many poll results fell outside the margin of error. A Washington Post poll of Wisconsin with a four-point margin of error was off by 16 points. And an Emerson College poll of the main Senate race, also with a margin of error of four, was off by 14 points. So something else appears to be going on. One theory of polling's recent misfires is that Trump voters are reluctant to share their opinions out of fear of being judged. The so-called shy Trump voter effect but Selzer says she isn't seeing any evidence of that. If they were lying, then our data would look like a lot of randomness, a lot of chaos. Can't say it doesn't happen. It's just not happening at scale to affect my data. Another common explanation is that polls are failing to properly account for Trump voters. In building their models, pollsters make assumptions about who is likely to vote and what the electorate will look like. One way to do this is to look at past behavior. For example, Monmouth, a prominent polling firm based in New Jersey, says on its website that each voter is assigned a probability on the likelihood they will vote based on whether they voted before. In 2016, pollsters over-relied on this historical data and missed all the new people coming out for Trump. So, did they make the same mistake in 2020? The post-mortem is just beginning. But for her part, Selzer says her polls ignore traditional pollster hallmarks like past voting history and party identification. To the extent that I have a secret sauce, it is that I try to be assumption free. That is, I try to do as little as possible to get in the way of my data showing me what it is that's going to happen at this future time. And there are some pollsters that look backwards to see, well, what did they look like in the past and we'll make our data set looks like that. And I call that polling backwards. And I call what I do polling forward. That is, letting my data reveal to me what's happening with the electorate. Finally, some pollsters believe that Trump supporters just refuse to answer their calls, skewing the results. If true, it's problematic, and means that without dramatic changes, the polling industry likely faces even bumpier years ahead. There's no trend that's going to happen that's going to lend to more people answering their phone. It's not happening. Elon Kriegel was Hillary Clinton's data guru in 2016 and now leads a data analytics and polling firm for progressive candidates and organizations. He says in an era when people can easily tune out and avoid information they don't like, pollsters need to start innovating new ways to engage. 
Where we're setting ourselves up for long-term failure is by leaning on things that maybe worked well, but aren't working as well today. And instead of really looking for that new approach to really innovate, we're relying on just trying to optimize the thing that's slowly falling, you know, slowly, slowly getting worse. So why does all this matter? Polls measure more than just our preferences for candidates. They also gauge public opinion on hot button issues like abortion, guns, and climate change. Polls inform how journalists do their jobs, how politicians approach issues, and how leaders make big decisions that impact society. Without good polling, we're truly in the dark. Polling is very important to what journalists do because it tells us, not just for the horse race, which gets covered a lot, it gives us the pulse of the electorate that we're trying to cover. What issues matter most to them? I think it matters to democracy because it is a legitimate way for the, for the electorate to have a voice. They may or may not be able to ever contact their member of Congress or their senator or their president and tell them what it is that they think. But they can be part of a meaningful universe of, of poll respondents whose aggregated opinions can matter.